The problem with YouTube is basically any old idiot with a camera and a northern accent can rock up and film content about literally anything, including topics as important as health and safety with no real way of checking and verifying the competency of the person delivering the information. You won't have that problem with me though, because I have my competent person certificate right here. With my own competency established, let's explore a crucial aspect of ensuring a safe working environment, checking competencies. Why is it important? Checking competencies is of paramount importance because it directly impacts the safety and well-being of everyone in the workplace. When individuals possess the necessary skills, knowledge and experience to perform their task competently, the likelihood of accidents, injuries and costly mistakes is significantly reduced. By verifying competencies, employers can ensure that workers are adequately trained, up to date with industry standards and capable of safely operating equipment or executing specialist tasks. I suppose what I'm really trying to say is you wouldn't want to have your appendix removed by your local butcher because the chances are that this will result in a fatality and someone going to prison. They put you in jail right away. The end result is exactly the same if you let someone operate a fork truck, mute or enter a confined space without the proper training. Anyway, the good news is that unlike YouTube, checking competencies on a CDM site is actually quite straightforward. Let's dive in to how you check competencies. Who's responsible? The principal contractor or PC is responsible for the health, safety and welfare of everyone on site. A big part of this is making sure that everyone is competent to do what they are doing. What do you check for? There are three things to check for on a competency record or card. Number one is the date. Like milk, competency is useless once it's past its expiry date. Disgusting! Although that's probably a bad comparison because out of date milk will eventually turn into cheese and gain a new delicious lease of life. Whereas an out of date competency is truly useless. In such cases, refresher training needs to be conducted to ensure that the individuals are up to date with the latest standards and practices. Now, some certificates and cards may not have an expiry date. In these situations, it's essential to refer to industry guidance and determine how long a competency records are considered valid from the issue date. Keep in mind that these validity periods can vary wildly, so it's worth exploring them further for each specific case. Number two, correct card for the task. Next up, you need to ensure that the presented card or license is suitable for the equipment or task at hand. For example, someone may present you with a faultless truck license, but it's important to remember that not all licenses are created equally. There are three types of faultless truck license, B1, B2 and B3. A B1 accreditation allows you to use machines up to 5 tonnes, B2 covers machines from 5 tonnes to 15 tonnes, and B3 applies to anything that can carry over 15 tonnes. So if someone presents you with a B1 license but plans to drive a seven and a half ton fork truck, that license is about as valid as a cheese board with no cheese. I had the cheese! I had the cheese! I had the cheese! I don't know why I keep mentioning cheese. Actually, I do know. It's because I've been filming for hours and I'm fing starving. It's crucial to ensure that the license matches the specific equipment or task requirements to guarantee the safety and compliance. Think of it this way, if you unwrapped a packet of camembert only to find a wedge of stilton inside, you'd be pretty pissed off. Is there any cheese in this building? <laughs> Number three, authenticity of the license. Lastly, let's address the elephant in the room, the possibility of encountering fake licenses. While it may sound pessimistic, it's essential to be vigilant. I personally have seen far too many cherry picker licences in my day for this not to be checked. After all, training is much cheaper if you buy your car from that shady fella down the pub, but it's certainly not safe or legal. What are you buying? While the bigger training providers have made significant efforts to prevent fraud, there may still be instances where certificates from smaller or foreign training providers raise suspicions. In these cases, some detective work is required. The name's Sherlock Holmes. Look up the training provider's website, make phone calls, and verify the authenticity of the license. The larger training providers like IPATH and MPOS often provide apps that allow for quick and reliable verification of training. However, with the smaller companies or foreign providers, it may be more challenging. So be thorough and do your due diligence to ensure the legitimacy of competency records. 
Top tip, set competency requirements. To simplify the process and minimize the risk of encountering fraudulent licenses, consider setting competency requirements when you're putting the job out for tender. Insist on using reputable training companies such as iPath and specify that the use of their services is mandatory. By doing so, you can leverage the advanced verification apps provided by these companies, adding an extra layer of confidence and reliability to your competency checking process. That's all for today's video. If you're looking for a competent health and safety expert to help you with all your CDM needs, be sure to contact iSafe. At the very least, we can spot the difference between a real fork truck license and one that's been bought from Cow Sam Road in Bangkok. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, like, subscribe and stay safe. Love it.